What is up everyone? So in my last video on the main channel of Valem, I had the chance to share with you my latest project on making ChatGPT powered NPC. And I really didn't expect a result like this with NPC that could have their own personalities, scene understanding and even trigger some action. Now you guys were super curious about how to do this yourself, so I have the pleasure to share with you a two-part tutorial series where I will share everything that I learned. Now in the first part that you are watching right now, we are going to set up ChatGPT for Unity and be able to get a ChatGPT answer from a player's input text. Now the second part will be posted exclusively on my Patreon and will focus on more advanced subjects. On this exclusive tutorial, we will learn the setup in VR with voice to text, text to speech with Amazon Polly, and make the NPC trigger more than speech. So if you'd like to support the channel and learn more, you know what to do. The link is in the description. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in an almost empty Unity project. As you can see, the only thing that I did was add a 3D character. This one is from Ready Player Me, but it can work with any character. Next, I place the camera in front of this character and add a simple canvas with an input field for the player to write and this panel to get the NPC answer. But for now, if I click on play, I can type anything I want, but when I press on enter, this NPC stays silent. So let's fix this with the help of ChatGPT. Okay, so to set up ChatGPT for Unity, we are going to use this GitHub project that you will find in the description below. Then let's click on the top right corner, code, and click here to copy the Git link. Now let's go back to Unity. Okay, so to import this GitHub link, let's go to Windows, Package Manager, the plus button, add package from git URL and paste the link we have. And after clicking on add and wait a little bit, the package is now installed, but we are not ready to use it. Cause to use ChatGPT in our application, we need some credentials. For this, we need to go to the current user on this computer, create a new folder called .openai. Then inside this folder, let's create a new text called Hoth dot json. Make sure you are not making any typo here. Okay, so let's open this text file and on this text file you will need to copy this text that you will find in the description with the API key and the organization. Now what's left for us is to write inside these the key for the API and for the organization that you can get by first going to the OpenAI website and create an account or signing here. The next step is to go to platform.openai.com slash account slash API keys. And as you can see, we can create a new secret key here, which is like 20 characters long. But be careful because I believe it is only showed to you once. And with this secret key, we can paste it in the text file that we made earlier. Now for the organization key, you can go to the settings and you will be able to see it here. Okay, so at this point, you should have the authentication file ready with your two keys, which means that everything is ready to use ChatGPT. But be careful, because sadly, using ChatGPT API is not free. So I will leave in the description as well the pricing page if you want to learn more about it. Now, anyway, let's go back to Unity and get started on our response. Okay, so I'm going to create an empty game object called ChatGPT Manager. Then let's click on add component and create a component of the same name. I can then open this script in Visual Studio. Okay, so in this script, we are going to write at the top using OpenAI. Then create a new private variable, private OpenAI API, OpenAI equals new OpenAI API. By the way, as you can see, instead of adding the credential in our authentication file, we could directly pay them here. But as this will be directly written in the project, this is not a very secure method. Anyway, now let's create a new function called public void ask chat GPT that will take as a parameter a string called new text. Okay, so to get an answer from chat GPT, we need two things the model that we want to use, and a list of messages that correspond to the current chat conversation that we have. So for the list of chat messages, let's add at the top private list chat messages, messages equals new list of chat message. 
And with the new text input, let's create a new message with chat message, new message equals new chat message. Now, we can set the content with new message dot content equals new text. And in this case, the message is sent by the user himself. So let's write new message dot role equals user. We can then add this new message to our list of messages with messages dot add new message. Then the next step is to give this message to the chat GPT. And for this, let's create a new request with create chat completion request request equals new create chat completion request. At this point, we can set the request message to be our message list. And finally, for the model, we can do request.model equals GPT 3.5 Turbo. Now, it is noteworthy that you can actually choose different models based on what you want with the rate per minute and the token per minute, which you will find in this page right here. Okay, anyway, now we can get ChatGPT response with var response equals openai.createChatCompletion request. But as you can see, this create chat completion is a non-synchronous function. Now, that may be something that you've never heard before, but it basically makes it possible for this function to move to another task before it finished. To give you an example, it's like you're making a meal and while it cooks, you can dress the table. Cooking the meal in that case is a non-synchronous operation. Now, I will not go too much in details with this, but I will leave a link in the description that will explain it to you a bit better than me. <laughs> but anyway, in our case, we want to wait to get a response from ChatGPT before continuing. So let's write in front, await before OpenAI here, and then we can get rid of that error at the top by writing async in front of void. Okay, so at this point, once we have waited for the response to be generated, we are going to have a list of choices that we can choose from. So let's make sure that first it exists, so that if response.choice is not null, and that response.choice.count is greater than zero. Now, if it's the case, we have a response and we can use one of the choice. In my case, I'm going to keep it simple and add to our message list the first choice message with var chat response equals response.choices zero dot message. And then let's add it to our message list with messages dot add chat response. And just to test the response at this point, we can already debug with debug.log chat response dot content. Okay, Pew, here is the moment that you guys have been waiting for. Let's save and go back to Unity to find out if it works. Okay, so to test, let's go to our input field, click on the plus button next to on and edit, drag our chat GPT manager to this, and call or ask chat GPT function here at the top. This way, when we finish editing the input field, we should be able to get a response from ChatGPT if everything goes well. Now, let's find out by clicking on play. Okay, let's write, hello, how are you doing? And press on enter. And as you can see, it is working. That's so cool. As you can see in the debug console window, we have an answer from the AI. <laughs> and we can keep chatting and it will keep working. With this, the NPC will keep using the conversation that we are building together to answer each time. Now, anyway, we don't want the text to appear in the console window. We want it to appear in this text area. So let's see how we can fix this. I'm going to leave play mode and let's go back to our script. Now, at the top, I'm going to write using Unity Engine events. Now I'm going to create a custom Unity event that will take the string response as a parameter. So let's write public class on response event Unity event string. And don't forget to add in front system.serializable. This way, we have just created a custom Unity event that will take a string parameter, as you can see. And now we can just create one of those with public on response event on response. Finally, let's go to our as function and do on response dot invoke chat response dot content to call this function with the response that we have. And there you go. At this point, using this custom unit event, we can do anything we want with the response. And in my case, let's save, go back to Unity 
I'm going to select the manager and click on the plus button. Drag the text where we want to have the answer displayed and go at the top to text to have it correctly update from the response. And there you go. Now let's try this by clicking on play. And here you go, guys. As you can see, if I do the same as before, it correctly updates. That is so cool. And there you go, guys. This is how you can use ChatGPT in Unity and be able to trigger a response from the player's input. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. But of course, if you want to learn more about this with a complete conversation system and be able to tweak the personality and the action of the NPC, you can join my Patreon where I will show you everything. Big shout out to the new Patreon that are appearing on the screen right now. Now, thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.